share my screen so that way. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that way we all have an idea of just some context about what we do at South State Bank and um, just a little bit more about our programs. How does that sound to the crew? Sounds, Sounds good. good. All right. So you saw the flyer. You have an idea of what we do. Um, I'm Lisa Blatter. I am the, the director of campus recruiting and career development. What that really means is I oversee all of recruiting for the program, as well as the program development, implementation, and management of it. And I get the coolest job in the world because I get to work with young students that are trying to figure out what they want to do, as well as trying to help them learn about what commercial banking is. And so before I get into about our programs, I want to share a little bit about our company because I feel like it's important to know as you're getting ready to join a company, you should have some research done. You should know who you're jumping into, whether they're a high risk business, low risk business, whatever it may be. Um, we have over 275 locations in six states. We are in Virginia, Georgia, Alabama, North and South Carolina, and Florida. And we are one of the top, I would call us a super community bank or mid-sized bank in the Southeast region of the United States, which is phenomenal. We have over 5,000 employees and we've got over $40 billion in assets. In fact, I looked it up this morning and back in September of 2021, it was like 40 boy, $40.94 billion in assets. Um, it's a pretty big number. And I'm going to ask you for your opinion as to why this might matter. Um, we have $24 billion in loans and we have over 1 million customers. We're also in the middle of acquiring another bank in Atlanta, uh, Atlantic Bank or Bank Atlantic. I always mess up the name, so forgive me for that in advance. Um, which is going to bring an additional $4 billion in assets and over 250 plus employees. So when you look at the big picture of a company like this, as you're soul searching for a company, I, whether it's mine or someone else, go ahead and unmute your lines and share why would it be important to know about the strength behind a company? I know you all want to talk. Come on, Asundu. Yeah, why is it important to know the strengths of the company? Yeah. Talk to me, Mackenzie. Um, I would say just so you know, um, this may be wrong. Just, okay, just, I'm going to just go off the top of my head. I'm there just is thinking. no right or wrong answer, by the way. Just so you know, I'm not trying to trap you. So just tell me your perspective. Um, just so you can see what, you're coming into like in terms and just like with people or just in terms of the company like what they specialize in or what they're known for like just the better you know about the company the better um, position you'll be in definitely and and that's you know that's a definite piece right there when you think about what you're going into and then think about businesses being set up to be successful or to not be successful what you're going to see with South State is we have been growing rapidly since the Great Recession. So when banks were going out of business, Central State was coming into business. They've been, they, they started to form their entity right away. And they, it's a crazy little story. And, and if you join our internship, our CEO will tell you the story of how it all came to life. And it started off with him being part of programs like this. And our company is solid, it's strong, and it's stable. And I feel like as you're getting ready to go out there and look at your next career path, no matter what company you're looking for, these are the things I would be considering as I was spending money on my education or, or investing time into my education. If I was going to get something on the outcome, I want to make sure I'm joining a company that has a great reputation and that is going to be around for a while. 
here's where we are. Just to give you a little bit of an idea of our footprint, I verbally stated where we're located. Um, this is our footprint. And if you want a copy of this deck at the end of it, I'll be happy to share that with you all. And then these are our core values. So <clears throat> a lot of the times you can go into a company where a job is a job. You go in, you do the job, you clock in, you clock out. That's not what our objective is as a company. We want to invest in the entrepreneurial spirit to pursue excellence and inspire a greater purpose. And that's why we are here today. We want to build out your entrepreneurial spirit. We have local leaders that are essentially state presidents and regional presidents. And of the banks that we have acquired over the years, as we've grown, these were the former CEOs. Those local leaders, we continue to give that authority and we allow them to be part of our community. As anybody comes into our organization, we wanna hear about your ideas. We wanna give you the ability to think independently and to be that entrepreneur as you grow into your roles. The commercial banking associate and internship programs that I oversee are the fast track to becoming those leaders. And that's why I get so excited every day is because I get to help you all figure out if this is where you want to be. So the how we do it, I spoke to you about that local market leadership. Those folks make key decisions. If you go to a big or bigger company where they're worth 500 billion and up, they're probably going to have less of this because they're so big, they have to have more centralized decision making we still give our local leaders the decision. So as you intern with us, you work directly with those leaders and they give you more of the perspective of each market. Um, you know, I see a San Francisco Bay Bridge behind, uh, and forgive me, is it Takiria? Takiria? How do you say it again? I'm sorry, Takiria? Takiria. Takiria. <laughs> I see a San Francisco Bridge behind you, right? So I'm going to use yeah. that as an example of if you were there versus Florida, all the way down to Miami, you would experience several different cultural shifts, mindsets, work ethics, all of those things. The way consumers do business, we're going to give that local leader the ability to help us with that mindset. Now, we're not in San Francisco in, in a bank capacity, but we actually have people that live in San Francisco that work for us. And um, they work in other partnerships with us. So it's interesting how we have all different various locations and we have the ability to make some local decisions. Long-term horizon. If you're gonna choose to join our internship, my objective isn't for you to just join the internship and leave us. I'd like to see you continue your career path, get excited about banking hopefully, or some layer in banking where you can really identify where your strengths are and be here for the long term. We want to invest in you. You want to invest in a company right away with someone you feel like you're going to like and enjoy spending time with. And these core values are the things that we think about when we're hiring people. Are you here for just getting credit for your internship? This is probably not going to be the right fit. If it's here because this is something you're seriously interested in for the long-term horizon of your career, then this is going to be the right fit. And along the way, even if you don't know what you're doing, as you go through the programs, we're hoping that your long-term objectives will evolve into that long-term relationship as an employee with us as well, or customer. Remarkable experiences. I'm hoping that when you join the programs, you do feel this way when you're involved. And the program for the internship is basically an 11-week journey. And I'll talk to you about that most of the folks that join this internship want to come back the next time for the next level, which is our commercial associate program. Meaningful and lasting relationships. We're not here to just have you be treated like a number, whether you're a customer or an employee. This is not something we thrive for. We want to make sure that you're treated as individuals and that you get the ample time with your leaders that you need that you're feeling like you're getting developed, that you feel like you're getting that opportunity that you want. And by building relationships internally with the people you work with and building relationships externally in our communities by doing community involvement or participating in network events, you're building relationships locally. And then of course, we gotta have our greater purpose. What's your purpose? What do you really wanna make your mark on in our world? 
And so, you know, whether it's your faith, your family, or your service to your community, we want to respect it and honor it and give you the ability to balance it all out. Now, the what is our guiding principles? So this is what we do. And when you think about it, you look at the baseline over here, it's leadership, accountability, and integrity. So what we do is we have strong leaders that are out there in the market. My programs are designed to build future leaders. And then we hold you to your integrity, which is about being honest. And I can trust you when I'm not watching over your shoulder. And I am going to hold you accountable for the work that you're being asked to do, as well as your leadership will as well. But through those three layers there, we will have a foundation of soundness. What does that really mean? Strength. We're going to make money and we're going to continue to grow. And one of the top comments that people will share with me is that I joined your organization because you're a growth organization. We typically acquire one to two banks a year. We are taking this year off just because we literally just did our biggest acquisition ever, which was with South State and Center State, which was a merger of equals. And we doubled in size overnight. And that was after a series of other I call them marriages when we merger. Um, we're now getting ready for our next one. And then we're gonna take a little bit of a breather so we can continue to focus on our greater purpose as a company and really tweak through some of the things that we wanna be better at. So before I go any further, any comments or questions about who we are from a cultural cornerstone and what you're probably gonna see in, in every market that you sit in. All right, so our program, you're gonna see a snapshot of what our, what our first week looks like with the program. I typically will invite our associates as well as our interns to meet our CEO. You'll see that John Corbett's right here and this is my lovely backyard because during the time I took this picture, it was in the middle of 2020's inaugural um, group, which was 100% virtual when everybody went out and said they were canceling their internships. We still, we took an innovative stream. I mean, I took an innovative stream. I'm kidding. Um, we made things happen so you could all still continue to learn. And quite a few of these folks have come back to join us. But really, um, our program offers you quite a bit of stuff. We have various rotations that you'll get some time to experience. Banking is pretty cool. We get to build relationships with businesses and, and we're gonna speak specifically about commercial banking because that's the number one profitable function in my organization and in most banks is commercial banking. So before I go on my tangent, I wanna ask you all a question. I see some newcomers in here. Um, feel free to unmute the line or type into the chat box. What is commercial banking? What is commercial business? What, are, what, what does that mean to you? If you don't have a clue, type in the chat. I don't got a clue. It's okay. I wanna make sure I know where to start. Y'all are quick to say smoothies. Okay, commercial banking. How many of you, do we have like hand raising options here or not? Let's see here. How many of you by a raise of hands or by hand raising option or emoji have ever driven by a business that you frequently go to? If y'all don't raise your hand, I'm gonna question your listening skills. Okay, <laughs> I'm just being funny. I hope you know that I'm not being rude. I hope, I hope you don't get that, okay. How many of you wondered how those things get financed? Give me any type of emoji reaction. Because that's what we do. A bank helps finance those buildings that you pass by. A bank helps bank those businesses you pass by. A bank helps handle financials for those corporations. Um, a bank helps dissect their financial data. How many of you have been taking accounting class by a raise of hands? It's my favorite one and I'm being sarcastic. It was painful. Okay, 
accounting, right? How does it apply? You're going to see that evolve in commercial banking because we take those tax statements, we take all of their balance sheets, we dissect the data to make sure that what they're taking in from an income level and what they're expensing makes sense to them requesting an additional loan. And so commercial banking starts with lending. That makes us the most money. And then commercial banking goes ahead and um, allows us to bank the individuals. Did you have a question? I have a question, uh, Lisa. So yeah. in a typical company, you know, we know what the assets are and liabilities are. For, but for a bank, it's a little different. You know, yeah. I think most people assume that savings accounts and checking accounts are assets for a bank, but that's not true. Can you kind of talk about Oh what, boy. What is, yeah. Now you're test system? now you're testing my accounting skills here. Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> no. Um, when we hold your money at the bank, I want you to think about it as you taking money out of your wallet and putting it into our bank, right? So even though you're seeing Of credit to your account by a debit means a bank. We're just holding it there. So it's actually considered a liability because we actually have to give it to you, even though you're holding it safe in our bank. Now, the opposite, like, you know, when you, when you borrow money from a bank, you're, you're getting a car loan, for example, or a credit card, you're borrowing money. So that's your liability. I want you to think about you depositing money, lending the bank money, because guess what the bank does with your money when you put it in the bank? We take that money and we use it as a big bundle and we cycle it back out into some type of investment, usually the Fed's involved, and it comes back and gives us a little bit more money. Now, lately in this economy, we're not seeing a lot of that being returned. So the way we make our money is actually through lending activities, but that's what typically happens. Or in order for us to lend, we have to actually hold some of the deposits on reserve, which means as a bank, we can't hold your money hostage so we have to have extra dollars on cash to make sure we have what's called a reserve. And that means in order for us to lend money out to people, we have to have additional funds in our queue so that we can lend money out to you. Did that answer your question or give way too much? I'm not sure. <laughs> that was perfect. It was perfect. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Had to make sure. Am I, am I in alignment here? Because what's really interesting is that I'm not your typical banker. And um, I spent time where I evolved. I started off in the branch 22 years ago, almost. I became a new accounts rep. I became an, a licensed insurance agent. I got my degree while working for the bank. So while working full-time, my bank helped co-pay for my education and I wound up getting it that way. It's not the preferred way I would ever recommend for anybody, but it's also because I switched my direction multiple times. I started off as a computer programmer. In fact, I wanted to become a lawyer at first. And I also wanted to become a doctor. And I realized neither of those three fit with me. I am not one of those individuals that's gonna sit there and fine tooth comb through data. It's just not my thing. I don't wanna look at a medical record. Give me financial information now, I'm gonna look at that. Cause I like numbers to tell me a story. I like to see behavior tell me a story. And most importantly, I like people. So when I thought about medical, there's some downfalls to that because you got to tell people that someone's, you know, passed away or they're sick or there's upsides that you can help them. As an attorney, I have to defend or prosecute people I may not agree with. I didn't feel good about any of those decisions. I needed to work with people. And that's why I get to do what I get to do. Um, and there's an assessment that I offer that's for free for anybody on this call that would like to take it. It's through Predictive Index. And what it does is it helps us figure out, gosh, am I on the right path? So before you invest more time or you're trying to figure things out from a, a career perspective, if you're an introspective individual, most likely you becoming a, a facilitator in a classroom in front of 50 people is not going to feel great for you. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's just not going to be most fulfilling. It depends upon you, right? Or if you're someone that needs to have stability and consistency. I don't wanna put you in a job that flips and changes all of the time. I wanna give you a role that's gonna be more consistent and deliberate with your makeup. Or gosh, if you're really formal and you like to follow rules and you wanna make sure that you're 
you're accurate and you're precise. I don't want to give you a job with a lot of vague information. I want to give you a job with specifics and stuff like that. So this assessment that I have is a two question assessment. It's been around since the 1950s. It's EEOC qualified. So what that really means is basically we can use it as a hiring tool to help pair you up with the right job. In fact, what it does is it'll also help you pair up with other jobs that might be available out there as well, which is really neat. And it's free for me to offer to you because we already pay for the service and I can get an unlimited amount of access to it. So at the end of the call, I'll type in my email address to you all so you can send me if you would like for me to do that for you. Um, it's a way for you to get a keen insight. And then if you wanna spend some one-on-one -on -one time with me, as time permits, I'd be happy to have those conversations with you about your results and give you a readback. How does that sound to the group? In fact, I'm gonna type my email in here right now, just in case you're interested. I did digress from the topic, so I'm gonna get back into it. <laughs> Any other questions before I do? Okay, let me see if I've got this showing here. Hang in. Here we go. Okay, so what do you experience when you go through the internship? Um, you're going to get time with a relationship manager. These folks are the folks that go out and meet the businesses. They build the relationships with them. A lot of them are very seasoned at this role. And what we realize is, though, they are the money makers of the bank because they bring in the loans, right? Loans are going to be where we're making the most money. It's the way the banks make the most money. It's not through fees. If you've ever overdrawn your account, it's not because of those fees. Banks do make revenue on fees such as checking account fees and other things, but it's coming through the loans, specifically through commercial lending. To the token of about 70 to 80% of my bank's profits are driven through these activities that start with the relationship manager. So spending time with them, you're going to observe, you're going to learn on the job. It's a learning experience. The next piece is that you're going to spend time observing what a commercial loan underwriter looks at and what they do. So commercial loan underwriters, I think, have a cool job because they get to take the information and dissect it. They get to look at someone's creditworthiness from a business and individual perspective, because believe it or not, even though it's a business, there's got to be someone managing or owning the business that's going to take some ownership in that. Um, there's a lot of legalities that come to place on how we can get money back from people, and we have to have what's called guarantors. So we get to see the business owners financials, we get to see the business financials. And we're talking about medical offices all the way down to very small at-home business lawn care companies. Um, depending upon your exposure, you're going to see deals that are being presented from a lending perspective and learning about what it takes to make a decision from a bank. Why do banks make decisions the way they do? And what are they looking at to mitigate risk when it comes to making those decisions? Any questions on the relationship manager or commercial loan underwriter roles? You get two weeks with each of those functions. All right. Well, there's a couple of other functions that support commercial lending, and those are the next three layers that you're going to see right here. Treasury management, branch, as well as operations. Treasury management is a service that we provide to business customers to basically make their banking easier. So we help manage their account payables. We help manage their stuff. We can even have them send their payments to us and manage it that way. We also can go ahead and help foster a way for them to do their banking from a scanner at their office. If you're like a doctor, for example, most likely people aren't paying in cash, they're paying by credit or by check. So we can give them those accesses through these resources. And if you're a business that pays a lot of employees, then perhaps you might need something that helps protect you against fraud and keep your banking safe. This, this team also takes care of that. Or maybe you have a large balance sitting out there and you really don't wanna pay bank fees as a commercial business or you wanna limit some of those fees. We have services through our account analysis that also helps try to find a way to offset some of those expenses through your balances and, and give you certain credits back. 
Um, so there's many different things, and those are just a few samples that the Treasury Management Services team does. And we spend some time with them, looking at them from a sales, operation, and support function. Then you'll also spend time in the branch. You walk into a bank as a consumer in the past, if you've done it recently, I'd be surprised because who banks in a branch nowadays, but we do have people bank in the branch. And a lot of our business customers have to go to the bank. They have to deposit their cash and their transactions. Maybe they're not, they're not big enough for treasury management services. They need a place to do their business as well as non-customers need a place to cash their checks. And our customers that like to go into the branch have a place to do their business as well. So we have a branch um, observation week dedicated where you get time to learn what it looks like to support commercial banking and what they do. From an account opening perspective, you might think it's easy peasy, but it is not. It is actually quite complex because new rules put in place really have us dissect businesses to the, the 15th level of ownership. There were many different companies, if you've heard of the phrase of a shell organization, they were hiding the way that they were managing funds through a business, through another business, through another business. So our job is to make sure we dissect it through those layers. So if you like to have an investigative hat on, the underwriting, as well as the treasury management and the relationship management functions are going to be really cool. And you're going to see some face-to-face -face interactions with those customers that way. From an operational support, we have teams that help us get loan documents prepared. They help us make sure that what we're doing is accurate and within the compliance of the law. Because when it comes to banks, we are highly regulated, which actually costs a ton of money. Um, and so in order to make sure that we are, are in compliance with what the regulations say, we have an operations team that services us and supports us. We also have service supports through our operations center that just take care of customer calls. So we have you spend some time with that team as well, learning about that and how to really respond to not so happy situations and sometimes some happy situations, but usually when they're calling, they need help or they're unhappy. I'm gonna go ahead and pause on the rotations of the program and just see if you have any questions or thoughts. Um, Lisa, I have a question for you. Um, sure. As it relates to the program and the rotation, um, is this program open to both? Um, is this program only open to graduating students, students that will graduate in May? Is it open to no. all? Okay. In, in fact, ideally for the internship, we would like to see someone being a rising junior as they're heading into their summer. So they're finishing their sophomore year. If you are a sophomore, I don't want you to hesitate to apply because if you're the right candidate, we can get you in early. And then what I would do is if you wanna come back the following summer and not have a repeat, I would give you a more customized senior level internship journey. And then the goal is once you're finished with this program, when you do graduate, you come back for our associate program, which, was, which is a much bigger portion of everything I've described minus the branch observations and operational observations. You're gonna spend time four months in relationship manager underwriting. And then I'm actually gonna add in credit analyst where you're gonna be taking financials and doing spreads and, and really dissecting a lot of data so you can understand what it is and why it is that we do the things that we do from a commercial banking perspective. So, Rising sophomores, rising juniors are perfect because they're graduating on time. They'll spend the summer with us, go back, finish their degree, and hopefully come back for us for full-time employment. Otherwise, if you're a rising sophomore, we still want to invite you to apply. Um, I would just make your journey different. Just this would be similar. The next year would be a little bit more customized. Did that answer your question, Cheryl? That was very, very helpful. I, and I think my next question would be, um, there may be some students on here that are um, seniors or mm -hmm. MBA students, and I just want to make sure that you will get to some opportunities for them as well. Yeah, definitely. And I'll talk about that. That's with the second program. You don't want to do the internship if you've already graduated, if you're going to be graduating in May. Um, if you're graduating in December, yes, you want to do the internship. And then I have two different sessions where I offer the full year associate program entries. 
Um, in January, we start off our winter group because those that graduate in December, we're gonna go ahead and offer a January group. So if you are graduating and you would like, or you're interested in this, we have the application open right now for commercial associates as well. And that role is the 12 month program, the bigger bite-sized version of what I've just described. And so you have an option. Ideally, we wanna see you be an intern and then grow into the associate role. We are making lots of different exceptions with the associate program as I think we always will, because the right talent, we don't wanna miss out on. And that associate program is the Fast Track Leadership Program. My CEO um, personally pulled me into this role a year and a half ago because he's so passionate about creating succession and infusing our awesome diverse candidates into the programs through future leaders and potential opportunities this way. I'll give you an example, someone that has graduated recently has already had two promotions and has now been promoted to an assistant vice president already. And so he's literally, he graduated in May. And I had another one that graduated last year and has now been moved twice and is now in a lender role. And so these roles do grow into leadership roles over time and it gives you that right foot in the door. Thank you so much, great answer. You got it, thank you. Any other questions or comments? If you are an intern, some of the events that we do do, um, we have an orientation conference, whether it's virtual or in person, I wanna make it in person, but this COVID thing keeps messing up my plans. So uh, well, <laughs> I'm gonna adjust and acclimate as I need to. Um, but what happens is, is during that first week, you're gonna attend new employee orientation hosted by our company. And then you will get a suite of onboarding sessions, including a virtual meeting with our CEO. And literally it's him and every intern we have. And if you're an associate, we do the same thing. Him and every associate we have. And it's your time to ask him questions and really just give him feedback about what you think we could be doing. He wants young future leaders like you in our company because the truth is, is as we get older, we get more complacent in our ways and we just continue to do the things that we do. We need fresh energy, fresh ideas. And that's where it's gonna come from is from our future leaders like you. And what a great opportunity is to really give you some great solid foundation. And I promise you, there are a lot of other bankers that are jealous that they didn't get to get in these programs because many banks actually stopped doing these programs for a long time. And so while we're in a very low rate environment where we're not making as much revenue, we're still continuing to invest because this is our succession planning for our leadership teams. So you're gonna get time to spend in orientation week with our CEO. You're also gonna spend time at graduation the last week. We start May 23rd this year, we end August 5th. That final week, everybody is flown out to Atlanta we do a capstone presentation based upon your experience that you learned. You're gonna co-facilitate with another two individuals and present in front of our executives in Atlanta. In addition to that, we also do a book club and our book club is really a book that's called Remarkable. And one of our board of directors happens to have co-authored this book and his name is David Salyers. If you get a chance to take a look at him on LinkedIn, you'll see that he is doing everything and anything in the world. He is one of the most um, positive speakers I've ever engaged with. And he also came from the original, the original executive team for Chick-fil-A back when they were working in a single wide trailer in Atlanta. Um, so we get time to read the book. And then we also spend time meeting him as the author and get, we have time to ask him questions about what he wrote in his story. And, and the leadership lessons that we learn in this book called Remarkable. And when you see our core values, you'll see there's a remarkable experience because of his influence on our culture. Um, and then we spend time with him. He hosts an event for us in Atlanta where he brings in some of the interns that he hosted when he was at Chick-fil-A and they're now executives or higher level folks where you get some exposure to really learning more about corporate tourism with other companies and getting to learn more about them. If Chick-fil-A is open this summer, we will go into their headquarters and spend time there 
they weren't open last summer or the one before because of COVID, but um, it was still a remarkable experience as well. So these are some of the events that you can expect as an intern. As an associate, you will be doing uh, rotational presentations, whether it's virtual or in person, depending upon what's happening in our world virus-wise. Any questions on the events? This is a sample schedule. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I think it's great that you guys let your um, CEO speak. Oh, yeah. You know, I think it's awesome that he actually wants to. That's the cool part. Like, he really wants to be part of this and, and spend time with you all. And that, to me, is the most magical thing. In fact, he had someone that he's like, oh, yeah, that's my Bitcoin guy. Like, he'll call him up and ask him Bitcoin questions. <laughs> Wasn't one of my interns, but that's, you know, he likes to, he likes to connect. And his kids are also your age as well, just as a heads up. So thank you for the feedback. This is a sample schedule of what we have put in place. I'm not saying that this is what we're going to be held to uh, because the program is probably going to be closer to 11 weeks, but it's really just from a concept of everything you will have to do as an intern will be mapped out for you. And you will have a schedule with contact information, web links, things like that. Um, as you join us during your first week. The target candidate that we're looking for is here. I will say we're a bank and banks like to make exceptions to the rule. So don't hesitate to apply if your degree does not fit one of these targeted degrees. I have someone with a marketing degree recently that is joining us. He joined us for the internship and now he's coming back for the associate program. So um, we like to see folks that have studied, you know, they have a major in accounting, business admin, economics, finance, even agricultural lending. Um, although we don't, we're not big in that arena, we do accept those types of degrees. Ideally, we want to see a 3.0 GPA, but if yours is a 2.98, please don't hesitate to apply. Um, you're interested in pursuing a career in commercial banking, or you're just, you really just want to figure it out and you're excited to learn about it. And you've got experience with software such as Microsoft Excel Word, et cetera. Um, the applicant should have been, a, well, this is for, should have graduated within the past two years if you're an associate candidate. Um, if you're an intern candidate, you wanna be, this is for the associate program. If you're an intern candidate, you wanna be a rising junior or a sophomore. Ideally junior sophomores will take and consider just to make sure if we have space. So what does it look like from when you do show an interest? You wanna apply for a job, here's what you do. You go ahead and you apply. There's an open link on our website um, through southstatebank.com. I'll show you how to find that link in just a second. What happens then is it goes through a review process and then you'll schedule the initial review interview with myself or a recruiter that I work with. And then once that process is finished, We'll talk about times that you're available and days that you're available so that I can go ahead and have you work with our divisional or regional or even state president to have an interview done. Um, they can do it virtually or in person as well. And then we provide you the offer. Usually it's done relatively quickly. We're at the point right now where we're starting to fill in our seats. We have half the group already filled and uh, we're looking for some extraordinary candidates for our internship still. And now I'm going to open up the floor for some questions and, and who's he, what's it? I had a quick question. Did your 12-month program already start? The one for the winter program? The January program has already launched. That started on January 10th. My next program will be beginning in June for the associate program. Okay. And how do we um, apply to that? We go to the website or? Yeah, let me show you that right now. Thank you. You got it. Thank you for that question. It was a good reminder for me. I get excited. I'm like, oh, what do you want to know? <laughs> All right. So if you go out to the web and you just go to southstatebank.com, and typically on every site you go to, if you're looking for a job, this is the normal way or the normal path you'll find it. Um, you'll go all the way down to the bottom of their page, just all the way down. And down here, you'll see an About Us section and you'll select Careers. And if I can, I'm gonna put the link in as I pull it up for you right now. 
When you go down here, you'll see I'm ready to apply online or search openings. I'm gonna go ahead and select search openings so you can go ahead and see what happens. It's gonna go ahead and leave the site and go to our vendor partner. That's gonna provide you the actual job requisition. I'm gonna go up here to the job title and again, I'm gonna type in intern. And down below, you'll see that there is an intern role right here. And if I can, what I am gonna do right now is put this into the chat queue for you. So that way you know where it's at. And then you'll see what the job description is. I want you to think about this as preferred. When it says preferred versus required, it doesn't mean it has to be. And that's why I say, don't hesitate to apply if it's not there, because that's not including all the topics I just highlighted either, which means that needs to be updated. So that's that piece right there. Did that answer your question? Yes. And that's I'm also going to, I'm going to put the associate one in the queue too, just so you all have it as well. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Did you have another question for me? Um, not as of yet. Right now. Okay. Question Who again, else has got I, some questions? I have a question. I get a lot of questions from students about when you're um, interviewing for interns, essentially, do they need experience, so to speak? I mean, what no. do you look for? Yeah. I'm looking okay. for you to have a good GPA. If you have involvement with other organizations or clubs or things like that, you're a leader in them, highlight it. If anything, I would encourage folks to start being more engaged that way if you're not already. Um, so that way you can really show off that you are taking extra steps beyond what you do because businesses look for that. When I look at a resume, I want to see your GPA. I want to see your graduation year. I want to see what your studies are. Some folks put in like, here are the courses that may be relevant. Sometimes they match, sometimes they don't. It's just dependent. So um, my advice would be um, just that. Did that answer your question? It did, but also, in, as you said, involvement in student groups and what have you on campus is important. Yeah, Community. Be, be involved with that. You're, you're not expected as college students to have experience. Not when you're interning at all. I mean, I'm not looking for you to have 10 internships at this point. I worked at McDonald's until I, <laughs> until I got a job at the bank. Or well, I worked in the restaurant industry until I got a job at the bank. Um, but that was my first job. I'm not expecting you to have internships. If you do have job experience, it's great. It's not going to be the key factor. I would say show up on time. Make sure you're on the camera. If you're invited to a webinar, make sure you're dressed appropriately. I've had people come to interviews drinking out of a McDonald's cup. If you have distractive animals and you're in your home, if you have a cat that you think is going to walk in front of you or a dog that's going to interrupt, get rid of those distractions. Give yourself time to focus for it. Um, and just be prepared for the interview. Research the company. Make sure you know who you're interviewing with. When I ask some candidate, when I ask candidates, you know, well, what do you know about our bank? And they tell me nothing. I'm going, well, do you really want to be here? Because you should have done some homework. And it's so easy to just Google search nowadays. When I started working back in the 90s, it wasn't as easy. So, you know, we didn't have Google. <laughs> We had barely even dial up internet for the love of a biscuit, you know? What else do you have for me? I want to thank you for taking the time to talk with us today. Oh, that was so sweet of you, Mackenzie. Thank you. Um, last question. Is it gonna be um, virtual, hybrid, or in-person, the internship? Hybrid. So what I mean by hybrid is, we as a group meet virtually, that's hybrid, but you're gonna be in an office. You're gonna be in a location. We're pulling everybody back to work at this point. Vaccinations have been around enough. You have options. So you can, you can go into offices. Nowadays, we're pulling everybody back at least three to five days a week. Um, and my hopes is, is that you get, from what I've been told, and you can tell me if this is an off-base comment, but from other students, they want to be in the office. They want to see what's going on. They're tired of these Zoom meetings. Let's get in. Let's talk to people. Those types of things. Am I off-base by that? No, you're you're right. Um, because I'm a like a not virtual. I'm a 
hands-on um, person and I like to um, be in person to learn instead of online because it can get kind of boring just looking at a camera. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, it totally can get boring. And I, I'll tell you, I work from home and I live by this and I'm an extrovert extraordinaire. So when I get to see humans, it's like, oh my gosh, I don't care if it's a computer or not. At least I get to engage. Uh, I've adjusted and yet um, being new into the workplace, how critical and important it is for you to really see hands on what's happening out there. We've already been sheltered enough for the past two and a half years. So um, my intention is when I say hybrid, I don't mean that it's going to be remote at all, really, unless some flare up in COVID happens where we have to just kind of taper it down for a week. Yeah. What we're seeing now is every one of my associates is full time in the office at this point, unless they've been exposed. And then we let them stay from home and work from home. Okay. How does that sound? That sounds good. Cool. Thank you. You got it. We have Brandon, do you have a question? Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was going to say we have two questions in the chat. Yeah, I saw them. Yeah. I, it says, I see your locations are mostly East Coast in the bank looking to expand to the West. And also, do you handle any international business accounts? Um, I want to say yes, yes, and yes. Uh, there's always been talk about us expanding out further. Where we will expand will be in markets that we deem to be profitable and, and really crucial. So we're not going to go to markets that aren't going to be growing markets, if that makes sense. So a lot of people may be, for example, leaving California right now. We're probably not going to head into that area. And I'm not saying that that's even on the docket. Texas is a big topic. Um, but like I said, my, uh, well, I didn't say this to you all, but my CEO is committed to my organization who has been growing so rapidly. When I joined the bank four years ago, we were in the single digits of billions. And now we're, and we had under a thousand employees. And now we have over 5,000 employees and we're in $40, $40 billion in digits. We've grown so quickly. We're not going to be acquiring any new banks in the next, in 2022. Now that's to not say that they're not going to tee one up for 2023 or two, because we typically do do two acquisitions a year. So it could be that we go out into the West. I will say we have a correspondent division that um, helps bank other banks. So basically what this means is we help the smaller banks do the things that they cannot do. For example, wire transfers. Um, they need to have reserves. They need to have loans done that are too big for their, their britches. We will go ahead and help facilitate that through our correspondent team. And we also work on FinTech solutions. What is that? That's financial technology solutions to make it easier for our customers make it easier for us to automate processes, things like that. They go all the way out to California. So we're in a lot of different states when it comes to our correspondent division. This program doesn't work in that area, but if you were to join the program and it was something that was of interest, you get exposure to that team and you could potentially continue on with that team as a temporary worker or another intern. I know that they also have some programs that they're working on as well. Where will the internship be located when we are in person? If um, anything, my objective is to put you in a location that's close to where you're going to spend your summer. Hopefully where you want to spend your summer is where you want to spend your next summer so we can groom you into that market and get you to know those people that you would be working for long term. But it's really dependent upon where you're going to be living. We don't relocate you or anything like that unless it's something you choose. For example, I had a student in Atlanta. Atlanta was full. They're usually the first group to fill up. Um, and so they went to Charlotte, North Carolina because they had a space available. So sometimes where we don't have spots, we may say, hey, tell me what your backup options are if it's something that works. The reason why it worked for this student was because he had an aunt over in Charlotte and he stayed the summer with them. I don't want to pose any financial issues. And uh, one other thing I haven't mentioned, for the internship, we do start our salary off at $17 an hour. It is full-time um, employment, so you do get 40 hours a week, aside from the two weeks where there's holidays. We don't pay for holidays with the internship, but you can always make up those hours throughout the week. So it is a full-time experience. And I'm not sure whether or not your school accommodates offering credits for internships. I've had other institutions do that, 
um, with the robust curriculum we provide for the students, it's qualified for certain classes. So um, I'm not sure if you all can speak to that or not, but that's something else that I've been able to work with other colleges. Did that answer Brandon's questions? And is it Alaya, your question? I mean, we do have that um, a class on the books that um, for an internship, but I mean, it hasn't been used um, in years because just right now we're not set up to um, to accommodate that. But okay. you know, we are looking at that. Yes. Awesome. I just wanted to make sure, like, because I know that it's something else that like, not all internships do. And I've always been challenged with, well, why is your internship 10 or 11 weeks? And I always say, just in case someone needs it for college credit because I wanna make sure that not only do we put a lot of time in training you and educating you on commercial banking, but if it's something that's available, we have it. Because otherwise they would make it nine weeks for me if I could, but no, I'm not. <laughs> Good to know, thank you for that. Well, we're down to the last few minutes. What other questions or thoughts or comments do you have, Karu? I'd, I wanna be able to answer that for you. I will again type in my email and I'm also going to put in my cell phone for you because if by chance you want to just text me offline, you can do that too. I'm easy going with that. In fact, it's easier for me to respond to you through text sometimes, especially if it's after hours. I have a five-year-old and an eight-year-old I take care of with my husband, but they get me distracted later on at night. And so I, sh I shut my computer down after five o'clock so that I can focus on my time with my family. But this is a way I can make sure I can follow up with you and not forget. We definitely wanna thank you for taking the time to expose our uh, students to um, your bank. I mean, I think it was very informative, at least for me. Maybe I need to uh, sign up for an internship. Who knows? <laughs> I'm a little too old for that. But any other questions for Lisa? Thank you for the comment. This was awesome. I'm glad it was. You never know how it goes with these things. How's everybody feeling? Can I get a what, what emoji? Do we have a what, what emoji? I mean, <laughs> Thank you so much for the opportunity to spend with you all. I can't thank you enough. This has been great. And uh, if there's anything I can do for you, I am here as a support service. And once I get my recruit, my new recruiter hired, I will definitely share that information with you all as well for those that uh, are interested. I think yes. you're from a couple of students based on the comments. Go ahead, Ms. Cool. McKenzie. I'm going to say thank you once again. Oh, thank you. It's awesome. Bring on the applications. <laughs> and I look forward to speaking to some of you or all of you in the future. Otherwise, um, if you do want me to send you out that survey or that assessment that's free for you as a gift for me for spending time with you, whether you're a student or a faculty, I'd be happy to do that for you. It's always something that's, I love psychology and I love the science behind this. And it's just one of those things that I feel like, hey, if you want it, I can send it out and uh, it's easy peasy to take. Thank you all for your time again. It was great spending time with you. Thank you.